Hi everyone, this is Vadim Tabakman and I run the technical evangelism team here at Nintex. Now I want to talk about intelligent process automation. It's one of the big things that's being spoken about in the industry at the moment. And it's really all around not just building out your processes, your business processes and to improve the business, but also to build intelligent processes. Now I wanted to show you this site here, not only because it's a really cool animation, but because there's a lot of information that you can learn about what IPA really is. So go to nintex.com, do a search for IPA. This is the first result that you get. Now, you'll see there's a video here. You'll be able to learn more and more about how Nintex can help with intelligent process automation. Now, historically, I've been involved in building a bunch of workflows, but what's really important is around building reusable workflows, things that you can reuse that will save you time later on so you don't have to build things over and over again. Now, this is where I think intelligent process automation is actually really important. So I'm gonna show you one particular process. It's a really simple process, but I wanna show you how you can start thinking about those processes and actually add some intelligence in, into them and make them smarter. Now, here is a scenario that we have here. This is a company that has a very simple application for leave. Now, where the problem is, is that in order for their employees to be able to fill in their leave request, they're either printing this out or they already have a bunch of printouts and they go to the admin's desk and they grab one. They fill it in, so you can see here, they'll put in their name, the department, their start and end date, what kind of leave, and then maybe a reason. And then they'll sign it and date it. Now then they physically have to go and dump it onto their manager's desk to get uh, approval, you know, get the sign off. Now, first of all, it's really hard to keep track of this because paperwork disappears. Uh, or you, know, you get approval for it, but then somebody forgets to add it into their uh, their personal calendar, their team calendar. So this is some of the issues that you'll have with kind of paper-based processes. So is there a way to improve this? Yeah, there's probably a number of different tools you can use. I mean, even email is probably a way of keeping track of approvals. But let's think of a different way. Now I'm gonna go over here. And here's a Nintex Workflow Cloud environment where I've built a very simple form. You can see the start of it is a form, so somebody fills in a form and it kicks off this particular process. And all it does is an express approval, basically assigns a task to somebody. So let's have a quick look at the form. You'll see it's pretty straightforward. It's just like the Word document that you saw with all the fields on there. The only difference is you put in your employer ID because we wanted to uniquely identify that particular individual. You've got department, start date, end date, those four, re, uh, four leave types, and the reason. So already you have a digital form instead of a paper-based form, which means that if it's submitted, the data is going to go somewhere, and it's you know, auditable, trackable. So let's get out of there. And what is the actual workflow doing? Now it's a very simple workflow. It's going to assign a task to somebody. So you can see I've hard-coded the name of the task, application for leave, I've inserted the employee ID there, but I've also hard-coded the email address of the person who's going to be assigned a task. In this case, you know, it's going to be the manager. But what if you have multiple managers, right? Hard-coding it is probably not a great idea. But this is just version one of a manual process that you have now automated, right? Simple way. Now, of course, there are definitely going to be improvements that you can add. And you can say that with every workflow that you built. So let's have a look at what's V2 look like. So if we make some changes, let's have a look at the next version. So here, again, we have the form. I've made a slight change to this form. Instead of the employee ID, I've actually added an employee email address. And the reason is, first of all, it's easier for people to remember their email address. But also, the reason why I didn't put in a first name and a last name is because there could be multiple people with the same name working at the company. So employee email uniquely identifies them. So that's really the only change that I made. Okay, so let's have a look at what are we doing now. Now here we have two Active Directory actions. One is getting user details. So we're taking that email address and from Active Directory, we're pulling out the first name and the last name. Right, so that's gonna make this a little bit more user friendly when it comes to assigning tasks to people. But what we're also doing is we're getting the manager details. So based on that employee email, pull out the email address of the manager. So now we know who we actually have to assign the task to. Now, when we jump into this express approval action, now it's a little bit more dynamic. We're actually saying application for leave for the first name and the last name of the employee. 
and we're also assigning uh, the task to the actual manager's email address, right to the actual manager. So now we already have, just with a few little actions there, we've already made this workflow a little bit smarter, a little bit more dynamic. So what can we do to even improve this? Because let's think of a particular scenario where a user fills in that form, submits the leave request. What if the leave request is for two weeks from now and the manager takes three weeks to respond? That's going to give the employee a little bit of concern Know, can I go and leave? Can I not go and leave? You know, I don't want to just leave the company in the lurch. Did my manager just not see this? You know, what what's going on? Right. So you really want to improve the uh, the experience for the employee. So let's have a look at V3. So this is a version three of this particular workflow. And now nothing's changed in the form. Of course, we could always improve it. Or we could always add some rules to make things a little bit smoother. For example, if somebody submits a leave request where the end date is before the start date, you want to have a rule there to actually say, well, hold on a second, you know, you've, your date's mixed up, you need to fix that. So you can add a little bit more uh, smartness into the form as well. But let's say we just have the, the usual form. Now, here's the same action I had before, talking to Active Directory, pulling out the first name and last name. The only difference is I've actually relabeled the action. Now, this is making things not different for the workflow itself, but definitely makes things easier for you guys to maintain this workflow over time, especially if somebody else has to take over this workflow. Labeling it you know, makes this workflow a little bit better. I have an action here. This is going to be an interesting one. This is a SQL Server action. Where we're querying SQL Server, and you see here we're actually going to call something called Get Fastest Approver. So how is it actually figuring that out? I'll tell you that in a moment. It's actually where you're starting to add some intelligence into your workflow. So once we get the fastest approver, we actually check, did we get one? Yes, we did. All right, get that approver because that's who we're going to assign a task to. If we didn't, let's just go back to Active Directory and pull out the manager. Okay, so let's scroll down here. Now let's ignore this for a moment and go right down the bottom. And here we're actually storing some data back into that SQL Server database. So what data are we storing? This is where all this comes into play. Now the express approval action pretty much looks exactly the same. So let's pop in here. Same thing, application for leave, first name, last name, etc. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that the process is as fast as it possibly can be. So if we scroll down here, we can actually say, no, I actually do want reminders. I want to send out five reminders and I want to send them daily. And of course, I can customize the email and all that sort of stuff. I can also do something like, well, what happens if we've set a particular due date? What next? So we can calculate, add another couple of days, and then say, who do we escalate this to? So what this means is we're trying to build a workflow that's not going to just sit there forever. right? We're going to assign a task to the appropriate individual, and if they don't respond within a certain amount of time, we're going to automatically escalate it to you know, another individual. Or maybe we want to automatically complete it. What if we say, we're going to give the manager five days to respond to a task, and if they don't respond, give them a few more days, if they still don't respond, we're going to automatically complete it and maybe approve it automatically. Right? So it's just another way of making sure the workflow doesn't sit there. But what I've done around the express approval is, if, is I've captured the start time, and I've also captured the end time. And then I've done a calculation. Tell me how many hours have gone by since we've assigned a task to that individual until they actually responded, whether it's approved or rejected. And that's what we're sending to the database. So the database is going to store all the uh, responses, how long they took, who the person was that responded, who it was uh, originally assigned from, so who the original employee was that applied for leave, we're storing all that in the database because then the next time a submission comes in, we go back, we run this workflow again, and now it's going to query the database and say, based on some calculation, figure out the fastest approver, let's assign a task to them. Right? The idea here is to make sure that as we start capturing who the fastest approvers are, those are the individuals that are going to be able to respond to these tasks faster than anybody else. And it's more likely that we're going to get these workflows to complete faster, right? Which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve the business, make it more efficient. 
Now, of course, this is gonna, probably not going to be the ideal scenario for a leave request because you probably want to assign it to the manager. But this just gives you an idea of what you can actually think about in order to improve your processes. Now, alternatively, instead of just getting the fastest approver, you might say, give me the top five approvers. And then you assign a task to one. And if you don't get a response within a certain, say, within a day, you cancel that task, assign it to the next person. Cancel that one, assign it to the next one until you get a response, right? Those five approvers are going to be the fastest approvers. Now, something else you could really do is instead of just assigning a task to one individual, find the fastest approvers, assign a task to all five, and just wait for somebody to approve it. That way, five people all get a task at the same time. As long as you get one approval, the workflow will continue and the original uh, initiator of the, of the workflow will get a notification saying your leave request was approved. Or if everybody rejects it, you can let them know that it was rejected. This is a way of adding some intelligence into your workflow because the idea here is that not only are you running a workflow to automate the process, but you're running the workflow, capturing the data, storing it somewhere, and then your workflow can make logical decisions based on the data that you've captured to improve itself, to improve that process. Now that's one way. Of course, whenever you read up about or listen to other videos, podcasts, things like that around intelligent process automation, they also talk about things like machine learning and AI. Now granted that is also a way to improve your processes, right? But it's always going to be send the data somewhere and make a decision based off of that data. So regardless, this number of different ways you can improve your business processes. So hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on how you can actually start thinking about the processes that you have and start improving on those and actually make them smarter and build out these little branches of logic so that you can get the decisions that you need, get the responses that you need and get your workflows to complete faster. Maybe you'll find that as you start sending more information up to uh, up to a database, maybe you build a stored procedure in your database that actually starts looking at uh, the length of the leave request that was submitted. So it could be something like if a leave request was submitted and they requested leave for two days and it was greater than a month away from now, it automatically gets approved. Right? You can actually build that sort of logic into uh, you know, the stored procedure or the database captures all that information, sets some thresholds and things like that, you know, and maybe even adjust them over time as you see things uh, happening. Now, one of the other things that I should point out is this option over here called Hawkeye. This allows you to send some of this data up to Nintex Hawkeye, right? This is kind of like a, treat it as like a data warehouse for some of the data that's important to you to be able to report on. And then you can use Power BI, Tableau, whatever other BI tool that you use to start building out some really cool dashboards around some of this data. And that might you know, give you the visibility into trends and things like that, that you can then adjust thresholds accordingly. So there's a lot of things you can do to improve the processes that you currently have, whether they're manual or automated, and you can actually make them better, you can make them smarter, make them more intelligent. So hopefully this, is, this has shed a little bit of light on uh, building out some intelligent business processes. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Appreciate your time. Thank you.